So it looks like the iPhone hype train is back in full motion because in front of me today, I have some 3D printouts. What will likely be at this point, the upcoming iPhone, at least the schematics for it, the scale for it. It'll help give you some insight on what Apple is likely up to right now and how the iPhone is gonna change somewhat substantially with the next generation. So on the right hand side over here, these are those 3D renderings and these are based on schematics that case companies have leaked out. There's a few different ones that have confirmed they're already in production of upcoming cases for these upcoming devices. The storyline has been corroborated from a number of different manufacturers and also, of course, websites. Over here, you can see the dual camera setup on the bigger one and then a single camera setup on this one, which is slightly smaller. For comparison, the current lineup of iPhones, we've got the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. Supposedly, this one here will be the only one to stick around and your new iPhone lineup is gonna look like this. This one here is going to be the biggest iPhone that Apple has ever made. This will be a 6.5 inch iPhone. If you take this and compare it to the current generation 8 Plus, it kind of feels archaic at this point holding that thing up. This has the giant chin and forehead, kind of dates it at this point. If I hold up this guy, they are almost identical in scale, but the difference difference is this one is almost all display, but if you've ever held on to an 8 Plus, you pretty much know what it's gonna be like to hold on to the top of the range, most expensive, most premium upcoming iPhone 10 Plus. Of course, that's a code name right now. This may be called that, maybe not. I mean, the whole thing is so confusing. The width of the device is just over three inches. The length here, 6.2 inches. And then of course the thickness, which looks to be identical to the current iPhone 10. It's very familiar here, SIM card tray in this location here, power switch up there, of course the elongated power switch now, volume buttons on the other side as well as your hold switch. The notch looks to be identical to the current generation iPhone 10. I already spoke about the camera layout, identical there as well. There are some rumors about this connector. There was talk originally of maybe Apple switching to USB Type-C would of course be awesome because there's so many other devices that use that connector as well as quick charging and so on, but the current rumor states that they're more likely to put an adapter, a USB Type-C adapter in the box, and a charger capable of a quicker charge than you're used to using the adapter. This guy here is expected to be the most expensive of the entire new lineup, probably breaking that $1,000 price tag all over again. Now things get more interesting when I pull out this other unit. That one is smaller, and you're like, what's going on there? Well, this mock-up is the rumored 6.1 inch, the budget iPhone that everyone has been asking for. Now this one here gets rid of the OLED display and swaps it out for a less expensive LCD panel. If I flip it over here, you'll notice it's a single camera setup, which is actually more similar to the current generation iPhone 8, giving you an almost iPhone 10 experience at a much cheaper price tag. The rumor on this guy is that it may come in somewhere around $600 which for a new phone is unprecedented from Apple. Now there's some other rumors as well that this device here will be constructed a little bit differently, similar to the 8 and 8 Plus now with an aluminum body rather than the stainless steel that you see on the fancy iPhone 10 that currently exists. That's how that price is gonna be able to come down. Now you're gonna need to decide of course what that's worth to you and whether or not this budget version makes more sense to you, but you'll be sacrificing OLED, a bit of the construction and of course, the dual lens camera. This one is 5.8 inches. This is just over six inches on the measurement as expected. There's obviously all kinds of market pressure here, especially in certain markets where the budgetary restrictions may have held people back. I think this is going to be the most compelling iPhone that Apple has done. An awareness of how the market is changing and how a lot of people, they just don't wanna spend $1,000 plus for a smartphone and also the benefits that happen for a customer beyond the $1,000 price point don't necessarily map directly to your enjoyment of the product. They can all of a sudden insert themselves into a marketplace where they've been missing 
but I like to see this tech becoming more accessible regardless of which brand it's coming from. This shows a level of self-awareness for Apple as a brand that we should have a product to meet that criteria. Now, 600 is still a lot of dollars, but just the fact that they're noticing is a good sign. Now, let me put the question towards you. If you were faced with the choice, which is the most compelling to you? You can let me know down in the comments. I'm fairly confident we're gonna see a setup somewhat like this, if not identical. So there you have it. Where'd you learn about it? Unbox therapy. Okay, cool.